It's always fun to hear smart questions and comments from actors. It really represents a genuine interest in knowing more or sharing a common experience. Many times answers to actors' questions seem to make sense, while others can leave the questioner more confused (laughs) or with multiple follow-ups, which, of course, can be frustrating. In this episode of Casting Actors Cast, we're going to take a deep dive with some email from the talent pool. And let's just hope that we come up for air. (laughs) Come on, that was good. (laughs) This is Casting Actors Cast. (laughs) It's time for another episode of Casting Actors Cast. Here he is, your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello and welcome to today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. I'm a casting director with McCorkle Casting in New York. Welcome. I hope you're having a good day. I'm really glad that you're here. This particular patio, this podcast video, is brought to you by the folks at Actors Connection. Here's my shout out. If you haven't checked out Actors Connection, they're conducting online classes, workshops, intensives with industry professionals. So you really get excellent information about what it is to be a professional. Plus, you get an opportunity to take all kinds of cool classes with all kinds of really cool people. So check out actorsconnection.com slash New York. And hello to my good friends, uh, Colleen and Tony. So let's talk about today's subject, shall we? I think it's kind of fascinating to get the kinds of emails and uh, letters and questions and people are sending me their uh, podcast videos to evaluate on the air, which I hope to do. So by the way, if you have uh, an interest in doing that, please go ahead and you can get to me by email, castingactorscast at gmail.com. Please send me a link to your audition. I'm happy to play it on the air and people have been really responding well to that. So if you want to do that, that would be great. But I love the exchange I'm getting with actors, um, developing really nice um, correspondence with some of these folks. So I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity today to share with you some of these emails and answer some questions, but also, you know, dive a little bit deeper than normally just question and answer period. So hopefully you're going to get a little bit more out of that. But first, this is that moment in the episode where I get to say thank you for tuning in. I invite you to go to our website, castingactorscast.com. There you're going to find all kinds of information. You're going to find links to past episodes of Casting Actors Cast. Plus, there's a form right on the landing page that says dive into the talent pool. If you do that, that's going to take you and filling out that form, by the way, that that gives me your email, your name and your email address, basically. But it's also a place where you can leave a question or a comment. That's where a lot of these uh, comments from today have actually come from. But anyway, if you do that, um, that's going to even open up a kind of a thank you page. And that thank you page includes a free downloadable book, a PDF of 100 pages called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. You can download it. You can print it out, whatever you want. It's absolutely free of charge. It's all about doing voiceover work. So if you're thinking about getting into it, this is a performance-oriented um, workshop manual, if you will, that I wrote several years ago, and it still holds up. It still has a lot of really excellent information about how to interpret copy, breaking down the copy, the best audition techniques that you can bring to the table. Um, Again, that's all free. The other thing is a free video called Casting Director's Secrets, What They Don't Tell You. Yeah, but I'm going to. (laughs) It's a 20-minute video. It's exclusive to those of you who fill out that form and click the submit button. By the way, I've said this hundreds of times, right? I'm, this is episode number 204 or five, something like that. I don't do anything with your information. On rare occasions, I might send out an email to you just talking about a particular episode, something like that. But I don't sell your information. I don't, you know, I don't spam you. I, I try to do my very, very best and making sure I don't do that. But on occasion, I might just send a little something or, or and like I've sent out three last year. 
in the whole year, I send out three additional emails. So you get my point. I'm not here to try to make money. My entire purpose of, for doing these podcasts is to grow a like-minded community of professionals who really want inside information on how to be better at being a professional, whether that's business information, business ideas, or whether that's some acting techniques, some acting ideas that'll help you improve the quality of your work and also hopefully grow your career. I am all over that. That's what I am about. So you can email me, uh, castingactorscast at gmail.com, um, the website, castingactorscast.com. Also, uh, last thing about this, uh, there is a calendar on the website, castingactorscast.com, and I actually have some of the classes that I'm going to be teaching. So maybe you might just find a, a class that's really valuable and might be useful, and it would be really a lot of fun to get to meet you. So consider checking out that schedule as well. Okay, enough of the housekeeping stuff. Let's jump into the subject at hand. Um, so I just have a, a handful of comments that I'm going to be reading here that I wanted to share with you and give you my sort of immediate response to some of these things because I think they're, I think they're really helpful and I think that they are indicative of those of you who are, have been regular listeners to the podcast. Oh, by the way, if you're just new joining us, this is such a fun place, and I encourage you to kind of hang in there and listen to these once-a-week episodes that I'm putting out there. I do my very best to just jam them with as much information as I possibly can. Um, I try to um, really kind of develop and grow this community to the best of my ability, and that's why I'm so glad that you're here. So the first one is from Megan, and Megan says, I've enjoyed your podcast. I've also enjoyed you on Actors Connection throughout the pandemic. I just came back into the biz uh, a year ago. I'm 48 years old, non-union. I grew up as a mime clown on stage and 80s dancer on Dancing on Air, Dance Show, Walnut Street Theater, Five and Under, Commercials, Industrials. I stepped out of the biz for 18 years to raise my four kids. I'm stepping back in, currently working with Bright Lights Media on QVC, short films in Philly, and last week I spent two days shooting a spec commercial with the Hallmark director Colin Thays in Woodstock, Connecticut. Colin did mention you and Pat are casting for a spectacular Christmas that he's working on as well. Uh, That's right, that's for Hallmark. So uh, congrats to you both. And uh, thank you very much for that, Megan. You know, I, I wanted to read this letter because I love how the six degrees of separation sometimes just become like two degrees of separation. So it turns out that this person that Megan was working with in Philadelphia is also working on the film that we've been casting for Hallmark. We're working on our third Hallmark movie right now. And it's been a lot of fun. They're really, really uh, uh, interesting and fun to work on. And we've had a great time. So... So she's working with uh, uh, somebody down in Philadelphia who happens to be working here, who happens to know me. So, do you know, it's kind of amazing how that happens, right? And believe me, I find that the industry seems to be getting smaller and smaller the more I'm doing it. That there are all of these interconnected, you know, six degrees of separation happening um, with people in the industry. So I really appreciated that Megan took the time to reach out. But also, I thought her story was really interesting, and it's not an uncommon one. Um, I've met many, many talented, talented actors who have been away from the business for a while and are trying to figure out how to get back into it. And I think I should probably um, consider putting a podcast together about some of the changes that have happened since a lot of those actors of a certain age who are now coming back into the business, they might find it a little overwhelming because there are some distinct differences and some distinct changes that are taking place. And so that gave me an idea that perhaps a future podcast, uh, thanks to Megan, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be something that I'll probably put together. So stay tuned for that. So I appreciate that a lot. Our next um, uh, comment is from Robin. Robin says, good morning. I have a callback for a play coming up. And I've wondered if you believe in the school of thought of wearing the same outfit I did for the initial audition. I'm sorry to bother you, but I can't remember you mentioning this in a podcast. 
I appreciate any help that you can provide. Well, thank you, Robin. It's so nice to hear from you again. I love this question because there is a debate about this, but let me give you my feelings about it and kind of, and I'm not hedging the the answer here. (laughs) I'm just saying that other people might disagree with this, but here's my sense of things. And it doesn't matter whether it's for theater, for film, or for television. I like the idea of wearing what you wore in the initial audition for the callback. And here's the reason why. Something happened in the initial audition that made you very much a candidate for the project. So whether it was your fantastic acting, maybe the choices you made in the scene, maybe your fun, you know, magnetic personality, or maybe because you looked great, maybe because you had the presence and the self-confidence that was really helpful for us as casting and producers and directors to have good feelings about you. Why would you risk that by wearing something else? When you can simply put on the same clothes, you're going to recreate that same energy, that same feeling that you had. It did something for you then. Why couldn't it do something for you now? So I am a fan of wearing the same thing. Now, naysayers of that would say, nobody remembers what you wore. It's not that big a deal. Just wear clothing that you're comfortable in that perhaps reflects a little bit of the character. You don't have to worry about whether you wear the same thing or not. Okay, that's the other argument, but I've had experience, especially in commercial work uh, when I was acting, that wearing the same thing more often than not booked me the job. That's just my experience, and you could argue, well, that's just commercials, but I just, you know, life is too short. I don't want to take more risks than I need to, and if simply wearing what I wore before gets me the same kind of focus and attention it did on the first initial audition, and hey, I am going for it. (laughs) I mean, if you've been watching Casting Actress Cast It All, you'll realize I wear the same outfit and my same glasses on every damn episode. Do you know why that is? Well, it's not that I'm not creative in my clothing choices. And no, I just don't only own one navy blue sweater. In fact, I have like three of these. (laughs) But what I want to do is to develop some kind of consistency on the air. I just want uh, viewers to feel comfortable in the fact that I am consistent in my weird personality (laughs) and in my positive outlook on being an actor in the business. So that's why I do it. And it seems to be working because, gosh, we're like at 67,000 downloads of the podcast right now. Thanks to you all. All right. So you get my point. I think it's kind of a cool idea. And I really appreciate Robin uh, reaching out and asking me that question. Let's move on to the uh, third one. This is Richard. Um, And Richard was somebody who I evaluated in the most recent uh, evaluations of the the self-submit videos. He submitted a self-tape to me audition, and he's now commenting and writing back to me after that episode aired. So I thought it would be another shout out for Richard. If Hopefully, if you haven't seen that episode, uh, I invite you to do so. He did a lot of really good work, and I really did my best in helping make some suggestions that I, I hope are going to make a difference for him. And so this is his uh, response. Hello again, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for your wonderful feedback on my acting. It was most helpful. I will take some time to shoot this again, considering your comments. As for the tech points, thank you for this as well. I have a small ring light on the camera and a small light on my right side as well, which I will diffuse as you suggest. I shoot myself tapes and record my voiceover auditions from a small closet in my bedroom. There is very little space between my back drop and my camera. I will play around with the camera and the spacing to see if I can do something to keep more of a distance between the background and me. Again, thank you for this. It is most appreciative. Sincerely, Richard. Well, thank you so much for that, Richard. Um, And this is a common thing I talk a lot about, and that is many times actors, because of their spatial relationships and where they're shooting it, they more often than not need to take an additional step downstage from the backdrop. Here's the big if. If you can. (laughs) If you're shooting in a really tight space, like a lot of actors I know do this, then obviously you have to do whatever you can to make it work to your advantage. 
So it's not like it's one of those you have to kind of deals. It's really much more about when I look at a self-tape to really evaluate and see, are there things that are taking me out of watching the audition? And if I'm seeing some of those things, then that's why I'm bringing them up. So uh, once again, if you're interested in sending your self-tape, please do so. Let's move on to the fourth comment today. Uh, this is from um, Morgan. And he writes, hello, Jeffrey. I found your podcast by searching acting on Apple Podcasts. I absolutely love all of your episodes so far. I can't seem to find the older episodes, which is why I'm checking out your website. I can't wait to listen to and learn more. Well, thank you for that. Um, I recently became SAG eligible and plan on resubmitting to my old manager in February. I'm currently listening to you, Are You Open for Business episode, and I'm going down my own personal checklist. Thanks for all the advice and the tips and the knowledge. You're a great teacher, Morgan. Hey, Morgan, thank you so much. That's very, very cool. Um, being SAG eligible, that's a next step. That means that you're on your way to becoming a SAG after member and resubmitting and trying to reconnect with those people who you've had a relationship in the past with this new designation you've gotten for yourself is a really smart idea. And, you know, I love that actors can develop their own personal checklist based on some suggestions I'm making. Next thing I know, they're going ahead and they're coming up with their own checklist to help them feel more confident and more comfortable in their work. Boy, I couldn't be more excited. So thank you for that, Morgan. I just liked the fact that you were sort of... Um, really sincere in your kindness. And I appreciate that more than you know. And uh, I appreciate um, all the good work that you seem to be doing and wish you the very, very best. Now let's move on to our, uh, our next comment. This is uh, number five. I've been listening to your podcast. It's a real treasure trove. <laughs> treasure trove. I love that. And I improved my self-tape setup and technique as much as in line with what you told us in class as I could. So I had the student in a class. I actually used the lav mic on live Ecocast callback and booked my first ever co-star on Blue Bloods. Whoa! Hey, congratulations. Isn't that cool? So your word, and I'm going to continue reading now, but I'm thrilled. Your words that seeing a lav mic in the casting lets the casting director know you're a professional gave me a nice confidence boost. I also got my first self-tape request of 2022 on Monday, the first workday of the year. So I feel like that's a nice sign that many more may come. Um, and that is signed... Um, who is that signed from? Oh my gosh. I didn't write her name down. <laughs> um, I will, on the next episode, I'm going to share her name. And I'm sorry about that. That's so funny because I copied and pasted it and put it on my sheet to read. And I just didn't remember to put her name down. Wow. What a terrible way to end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just love that people are listening and they're applying some of these things. And guess what? They seem to be working. So congratulations if you're, you've just booked a Blue Bloods episode, you're a co-star, and all you did was use a lovelier microphone. And this is the microphone that I, I tell all of my students about. It costs 20 bucks at Amazon. You clip it to your lapel. And the sound quality is so great, especially for film and television. So if you haven't thought about the lavalier mic yet for your self-tape auditions, please don't hesitate. Do something nice for yourself. They're so inexpensive, and they will make a substantial difference in your work. And again, I apologize for just not remembering to write your name down, and I just kind of drew a complete blank. Anyway, I hope that that's helpful for you today. You might want to consider sending in uh, some correspondence. Maybe you have a question that I can answer on the air. I'd be happy to do so. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. I need a rest. And this is Casting Actors Cast. <laughs> uh, holy mackerel. <laughs> Thank you for joining Casting Actors Cast. Please don't forget to review, like, and share Casting Actors Cast wherever you get your patios, podcast videos. Thanks. I'm Megan Grace Martinez. 